Welcome to paradise. Good morning. It's uh, Sunday, September 11th, and I don't know if you can see that, but fall has arrived. It's cold. Well, it's chilly. Um, right now, the sun is up, but you can't tell that the sun is up. And if you look at the sky behind me, it looks cloudy. Believe it or not, there's not a cloud in the sky. What you're looking at is fire smoke. Uh, September is fire season here. And we've had some bad years. So far, this one isn't as bad, but it's not over, so it could get worse. It, they need rain to, to help. Without rain, it just gets worse and worse. Uh, I have fished this time of year on Lake Ponderay where visibility is pretty much zero. And you have to rely on what you have on your sonar <clears throat> and not go fast. Um, I happen to have a program on my, uh, my Hummingbird, it's called Auto Chart. And uh, I'll tell you real quick, <clears throat> it's a program, it's probably standard. Now that, that, that unit's 12, 10 years old. So the technology's old, but it has an SD card slot. You put this blank SD card in. When you get out on the water, you hit record, and it records everywhere you go the depth using GPS. Then you come home, I have a master chip, and I have a program on my computer. You take the, the blank card that you did the record it on, you, you download the data, it processes it, you put your master chip in, and you burn the data to the master chip. So I have a master chip in my Hummingbird and, and I've been doing it for such a long time and I spend so much time out here that my map on my uh, sonar unit of Lake Ponderay is completely mapped to where I can, I can drive at full speed without looking and, and not worry, except I can't do that when the smoke, because if there's somebody out there, I'll kill them. Um, but like if, you know, if I, if I knew that the coast was clear, uh, in fact, there's a lot of times when I look ahead and there's nobody where I drive, but I'm watching my sonar, I'm not even looking, because I know exactly what the depths are. And anyway, it's a nice program to have. Um, but beyond that, so, so what happens is you get, you get if you're going to fish topwater this, when this is going on, uh, you get a long topwater bite because it's just basically like it's overcast. Uh, but anyway, getting on to, oh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize what today, today is the 21st anniversary of one of the worst days in American history. Um, it's funny, I have a vivid memory of that morning, it's like it just happened. There was this great topwater bite on Lake Paris at that time, and uh, I would show up, they had a gate, all the state-run parks, lakes are gated, and the gate opens at 6 a.m., and I would get over there, I lived eh, 10, 15 minutes from there, and I'd get there like quarter to six, because every once in a while the guy would open the gate early, um, and I remember I, I used to listen to a sports station called Extra Sports 690, which was out of San Diego. I had that on, and so I'm sitting at the gate, it's quarter to six, which means the attack just happened on the East Coast, because it's three hours later, and, and it hadn't reached here yet. So by the time the guy opened the gate and I launched, they hadn't been talking about it. I went out, uh, I, I fished till 8, 8.30, I think I fished till 8.30 came in, got in the truck. When I started the truck, the radio was on. And I hear him saying stuff like, uh, well, uh, we, the first plane hit the tower, da da da. I'm going, what the heck? I thought maybe they were talking about another country, something going on. By the time I drove the truck back the trailer into the water, I had gotten enough information to know something had happened. They didn't even know at that point every detail but they knew it was a coordinated attack because by then all the planes had hit. Um, I don't know if the one in Pennsylvania that the passengers took down, I don't know if that had happened yet, but 
I sat there on the launch ramp in the truck for like 15 minutes just listening to the news until, you know, a boat came, a truck came to back in. I was blocking. So I put it on the trailer. But I remember it, man, like it just happened. And it's so weird because I didn't know anybody who died, but it felt like I lost a member of my family. It was just that kind of grief. Uh, if you're too young to remember it, um, you're lucky. It, it was a, it was just a bad time. And um, if you ever want to read an amazing story about an incredible guy, uh, do a search of Pat Tillman. He was, uh, he played in the NFL for uh, the Arizona Cardinals, and um, he, he retired. He was a young man. Uh, I think he was in his 20s. He retired the spring after the attack so he could join the army and go fight and uh, he got killed in Afghanistan and originally the, 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 the military tried to cover it up they said he died in combat he did die in combat but he got killed by one of his own platoon not a, not a member of his platoon there were two two in the same area and they call it friendly fire anyway that's that's how he died it was it was pretty tragic, but heck of a man. I mean, he was making millions playing football. He could have just kept doing that. He he retired so he could go fight. Incredible. You should look it up. Okay, so next week I'm going. I I just came back from the Coeur d'Alene River system. Now I'm going on to the lake, Lake Coeur d'Alene, and I'll show you on the map where I'm going. It's the very upper part of the lake. I, I haven't fished that on my time on Lake Coeur d'Alene. I, I think I fished it 15 years ago, because I used to fish, I think I told you, I used to fish the local lakes a little bit, and then I just, at one point, I just focused on my home waters. And I seem to remember fishing in this area, um, but I don't really know anything about it. But I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'll show you on the map. Okay, so. Here is the upper reaches. This right here is Spokane River that empties the, out of the lake. And uh, so this is the upper part of the lake. I haven't been this far north this year. I haven't been this far in 15 years probably. This map looks like I use it five times a week. And I can't figure out why it's been sitting on the shelf for 15 years. It's ripped. It's got holes in it. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know if I've got animals living in the closet or what. But anyway, this is called uh, Wolf Bay Lodge. Let me get a little closer and focus. Or Wolf Lodge Bay. Wolf Lodge Bay. I'm going to launch right here because they're doing highway construction on this main highway. And I can't get to either of these ramps. Um, when I was going down to, to the river, Coeur d'Alene River, this is the road, runs along uh, along the uh, lake, um, and I noticed this ramp right here. So I'm going to launch there, and what I'm going to do is I'm fishing for smallmouth offshore. That's my target, and I'm it, the distance from this ramp to this point is about four miles I'm going to fast idle with my hummingbird in split screen I'm gonna have uh, 2d sonar on one side and side imaging on the other and my side imaging is going to be pointing at the bank so I'm gonna be getting a picture of what's below me and what's off all the way off to the side over to the bank and I'm just gonna be going this you know I can't go too fast because the uh, side imaging won't work and every time I run into something that looks fishable I'm gonna mark a waypoint so I'm looking for anything I mean I'm looking for bait I'm looking for arches uh, sometimes if a bass is feeding on crawdads he's his belly's scraping the bottom it looks like a rock I'm, I'm marking those I'm marking everything all the way to this point I'm going to run across to this little bay, to the point of that little bay, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Then you've got a bay on both sides. Beauty Bay, I think that's something blue, creek. And 
So I am going to spend probably the first two hours of my morning Tuesday just idling around marking stuff before I even fish. So that won't be on camera. I, I might, I might with the GoPro, if I see something really good, I might try to capture it. Um, but then once I'm done doing that, then I'm going to go back to the beginning where I marked my waypoints and I'm going to fish. And I'm targeting smallmouth. I'm going to do a lot of uh, it'll be drop shotting, um, the sinking minnow, uh, the, the craw, and I got a swim bait. I got two swim baits tied on. I got one big one tied on. If I, if I run into a school, I'll throw the big swim bait. I haven't thrown it yet this year. I've caught, uh, I caught a, a five plus on it once, and I've caught you know several four pounders I don't even know who makes it but it's one of these jointed things with a hinge I'll, I'll show you when we're on the water if I throw it um, it works it, there needs to be a little bit of chop not much just a little bit to, to get them to go for it it doesn't sink I added lead so it does sink real real slow but they usually come up for it anyway that's the plan so Tuesday morning I'll be somewhere in here. Um, I'll do an introduction before I start uh, scanning. Okay, see you then. Okay, it's uh, Tuesday morning. It's about 7.30. I got here a little early. Um, that's the bank. And I'm going to be fishing about four miles all the way down to until uh, it cuts down into a cove. Uh, I'm going to show you on the GoPro, this is not an educational uh, YouTube channel, but I'm going to show you, because I'm going to have my cameras off for probably a good two hours, I'll show you on there what I'm doing for those two hours to try to locate stuff. So we're going to get started right now. Okay, like I said, this is not an educational channel, but I want to show you what I'm going to be doing. There's the bank, it's the road. This is the road I take to get to uh, the Coeur d'Alene River, Anderson Lake, Blue Lake. Um, there's the bank, it's gonna go for four miles. I'm a little too shallow. I wanna stay around 30 feet. This is 2D sonar on the left, I got a split screen. Now this is a 10 year old Humminbird 898C. Uh, at the time it was considered, you know, high tech, now it's antique. You know the way they they uh, advance technology this thing is a dinosaur but it does the job for me um, so this is 2d sonar i've got the uh the beam it's a narrow beam so it's a 200 kilohertz um frequency the reason uh, according to i mean i can't i'm not an expert but from what i understand the higher the frequency the sharper the image the lower the frequency the wider the cone so I don't need a wide cone because this is my side scan. It's going to pick up the bottom under the boat and shoot over to the left. So it's going to increase my cone angle. So this is a narrow cone angle, but a high frequency for a, for a better picture. I'm going to try to stay around 30 feet. There's the bank. Now you probably can't tell this, this GoPro doesn't do it justice, but I'm very close to that bank. I'm 20, I'm a boat length or a little more from that bank. So this, see this 80? That's the length I've got this set for the beam to shoot out. I don't need 80. I need, I need the distance. First of all, I'm not gonna be fishing for fish at the bank. Probably five to 10 feet out before I even care. But let's just say we're going all the way to the bank and let's say we're 30 feet. To the bank you add the depth below the boat to the distance to the bank and that's what you need here because this this uh, uh, transducer it shoots straight down below the boat that's the black that's what's under the boat then it bounces off the bottom and shoots off to the left the total distance from the from the transducer to the bottom to the left is this number i don't need 80 i'm going to be in 30 feet Actually, I'm going to leave it at 80 for now. The smaller than this number, the sharper the picture. 
I mean, I could just crank it up to whatever the max is on this thing, 200 feet, but the smaller the number, the sharper the picture. Right now, I'm gonna leave it at 80, which gives me, when I get out here, 30 plus 50 to the bank. That should be good. Now, the other thing, this cone in 30 feet, the diameter, diameter of this cone is gonna be the, the, the width of my boat. So, if I'm cruising along, I'm going along, and I see something I like, I hit the waypoint button. I went over that, whatever that was, by the width of my boat. So it's not way out there, it's not way out there, it's under the boat. The problem is my, my, my GPS puck is here, my transducer is in the back of the boat, that's 10 feet. <coughs> by the time I mark it, I'm a minimum of 10 feet off. But it gets me in the ballpark, so when I come back, <coughs> excuse me, um, I can use my trolling motor to zero in on it. Now this one, okay, let's say I, I see something on here I like, and it's way off the boat. Let's say it's 30 feet from the boat. If I hit the, the waypoint, I'm in the ballpark, but it could be anywhere over there. So this has a feature where if I hit this button, it freezes whatever's in the screen, and then I can take that cursor and I can move it right to what I like, what I saw, then I waypoint it. It puts the waypoint right on the thing that I saw. How they do that, I don't know. I'm sure it's not complicated, but it blows me away that I can be 100 yards away with that frozen like that, mark it, and it's gonna go back to 100 yards and, and tell me what that uh, GPS coordinate was <clears throat> anyway that's it that's what I'm doing I'm marking them I'm running across I'm coming about four miles down here marking them rather than just drop the trolling motor and start throwing something and working my way I'm, I'm gonna do it this way today um, and see if I can come up with something so my cameras will be off for the next couple hours the next time we talk I will have marked a bunch of waypoints hopefully and I'm gonna be fishing. All right, well, we have a change of plans here. Let me get this fish in. Okay, come here, buddy. So here's what we're doing. I changed it up. If you've been watching these videos, you know that I uh, never stick to the plan. Hopefully you can see this. Um, this is my first one. I'll tell you what I, I yeah I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not graphing like I said I was I'm finding too many good spots so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fish the good spots um, I think that'll work so this guy here weighs oh stop hang on a minute I'm having some problems this morning my GoPro camera thing broke now I'm having trouble with my with my scale. This poor fish, man. He's come on. Just weigh it. He's two pounds three ounces. Okay. Alright, let me tell you what's going on here. Sorry, buddy. Whew. Okay, so I started graphing and uh, I realized I kept I just kept running into spots that looked really good and and I thought you know I'm gonna be wasting I mean I've still got a long ways to go and uh, I don't know I just I had this this idea that um, I'm just gonna stop and fish the spots that I think look good rather than go four miles so I hooked him I didn't have the GoPro camera hooked up and and then the thing broke on my camera the thing that holds it closed so I got to try to fix that anyway let's uh what was that two pounds three ounces it's 8 30 so I'm gonna set up my cameras and and do this thing Oh, that's a 
good one. <clears throat> oh, that's a really good one. Wow, that might be... Uh, oh, I better not say it. <laughs> because... <laughs> I'll jinx myself if I do. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Come over here. Yeah, no, he's not four. I was gonna say he was four, but he's not four. He's three. He's three something. Oh, jeez. Come here. something I think Casey's my my biggest of the day. There he is. GoPro, stop recording. So I got a 2.3 and a 2.15. And, uh... I abandoned that that idea. This is going to be much better. I passed a couple of spots that are that look really good, and when I got to this one, I d decided, uh, you know, just stop and fish it. Go fish that one. Go fish that one. Instead of wasting time going four miles up the up the bank. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Start recording. Three. Uh, no, I don't think he's a keeper. Maybe. Let's see. Ow! If he is, he's a little one. Should I put him on the board? I think I should uh, put him on the board because, you know. We don't know how this day is going to go. He is a keeper. So, he's not even, uh, he's a pound. gonna count him hopefully by the end of the day he's he's gone but <clears throat> zero fourteen <laughs> oh he's got me in the weeds I think he's got me in the weeds he does damn it there's a there's a bush down there oh I think I got him out I did, I got him out. Boy, I'll tell you, that's luck. Right there, that is luck. He had me in the weeds. And I got him out. I don't have my other camera set up. Come here, buddy. There he is. That's number four. He's not bad. Let's see what he weighs. Two pounds? 
he feels like he might be too. Nope, one, would you stop? I think it said 111, 111. There's a bush down there and he's, uh, I gotta be real careful cause I'm using eight pound test. And you know how that goes. He got me in that bush and somehow I got out. I don't know how I got out, but uh, 111, so that's three, that's four keeper, that 14 ouncer, I gotta get rid of him. 111. Okay, that's four. One more and at least I got a limit. Then I can get rid of that one, that 14 ouncer. It's 11 o'clock. Well, I don't know how big he is, but... Oh, he's got friends. Okay, yeah, there's a school around this dock. Um, I'm gonna weigh him. There's a bunch around this dock, so... I should be able to cull that 14 ounce fish. I hope he's more than 14. Tell you what, if he's under a pound, I'm not gonna count him. Got to be over a pound. In fact, I'm going to change my rules. Yeah, not 12 inches, over a pound. <laughs> He's a pound. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to count him. Let me show you what I'm going to do. Okay, this guy doesn't count. That guy I'll count, one pound. So I, I have four keepers. Um, yeah, because fish that are a pound are over 12 inches, so that's uh, that's my new my new keeper rule. There's a school down here. It's 35 feet here. They're under this boathouse, but I've caught uh, what three. The biggest one was a pound. I'm hoping there's a big one mixed in here, but the problem is that I think the little guys and when they're schooled like this, they get to it first. But we'll see. I think this is a keeper. Yeah, he's run see how he's running out to deep water? The little guys, they don't do that. They don't run like that. They come straight up. I'm not saying he's big, but he's more than a pound, I can tell you that. Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's way more than a pound. There's a lot of fish in this, uh, around this boathouse. I'm just gonna sit here. Oh, yeah, he's over two, I think. Well, he's two at least. Let's get him in the boat. That's uh, that's a limit. I don't horse him because I use light line. I don't want to. I'll get him right here. Come here. Come here. Come here. That's good that there's some good fish down there because, you know, I was catching those little guys. There he is. Come here. That's two pop. No, he's not even two. He might be two. Oh, come on, get out of there. Uh. There. One thing I know, he's more than one. He's more than a pound. And that's good. That helps.
I'm going to say one and three quarters. One and, oh, I'm getting good at that. You were 112, right, pal? 113. That's pretty close. See ya, buddy. Turn the GoPro camera on. And so, let's see what I got here. This is one of those spots I mark. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Well, he'll call the one pounder unless it's not a bass. What is that? Yeah, it's a bass. Oh, I snagged him. How do you snag on a drop shot? You believe that? He may not call the one pounder, actually. Yeah, I'm not even gonna weigh him. Look at that, I snagged him. How did, wait, 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 wait. How did I do that? So that means, what does that mean? That means he went over it. I felt the line, the, the weight of him on the line, and uh, set the hook. This guy better be more than a pound. Or I snagged another one. Uh, he's not huge, but he's fighting good, and I don't want to break him off, so... Let's just take our time. Yeah, he's over a pound, I think. Yeah, he's over a pound. Uh, come here. Come here. He's a pound and a half. No, he's not even a pound and a half. But he's over a pound, so I get to call. Uh, I'm hitting those spots that I uh, that I marked on my way up the lake. <sighs> Over a pound, one pound three ounces. I called up. <laughs> Oops, okay, see ya, buddy. So now he's the small one. Got rid of the one zero. That's a one three, so he's the small one. Well, the last one felt like a two pounder. This one feels like a two pounder. But the last one was one pound three ounces, so <laughs> let's just see together. Tell you one thing, they sure are fun to catch, man. They fight so darn hard. Look at this. Oh, there he is. Oh my God. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, oh, he came off. Jesus. Oh, he came off. Did you see that? <sighs> yeah, he was, uh, <laughs> he was more than a pound. Doggone it. I got a good one. Well, <laughs> the strip and line. Oh, I just had my drag. Come here. Oh, geez, it's a pike. Ah, hate these bastards. Okay, pal. Oh, boy. Hate this, man. It's amazing he doesn't break that line. <laughs> Eight pound test. Well, I guess I'd call my neighbor and give him a pike. All right, come here. Uh, I got hung up on this spot. I, I lost that big fat one and I, and I caught the pike. Probably spent way too much time over here, but... <laughs> I know he's not going to bite again, but I figured if he was here, maybe there'd be another one. But no, I think it's time to, that, that's a shallow, uh, that's probably largemouth water, down tree. I'll run over there and hit that down tree, and I'm going to 
I still got spots I marked probably about three or four more I'll go finish the rest of those it's quarter after two so I got a couple hours well I threw the uh, countdown minnow and a whole school of them followed me he's not gonna beat uh, what is it one three yeah he's not even a keeper but there's a school there and so I'm gonna work it come on he had like like three of them follow him in so let's keep working this is that road I take to go to the river winds all the way around the lake and it's a long drive but what are you gonna do well they got bluegill in here look at that <laughs> or was that a sunfish we don't have though we have crappie in Lake Ponderé I don't think we have bluegill or sunfish GoPro camera died, so uh, this last hour is going to be the back camera. This guy here is not going to help. What am I trying to do? I don't think he's going to help. The one I lost would have helped. <laughs> I haven't stopped thinking about that fish all day. I'm going to weigh them. It's one, one pound, three ounces is my small one. I know he's not going to help, but you know what? The day's almost over, and if he's one pound, four ounces, I'll be happy. I know one thing. He's angry. No, nope, one pound. One pound, one ounce. One pound, one ounce. Didn't help. Okay, we're done. My uh, five biggest. 215, 3, 4, 15, 5, 2, 6, 2, 6, 13, 7, 13, 8, 13. Nine, nine pounds, 13 ounces. My little one was one pound, three ounces. It would have sounded a lot better to say my little one was 111 and my big one was four or three and a half. I, I caught a three, well, a 215. The one I lost was bigger than that. He was fat. He'd been eating really good. But I lost them on the drop shot. I don't know. I don't usually lose too many on the drop shot. I didn't lose that pike. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm coming back tomorrow. Um, I'm going to do that side. I, I, I don't think I'm going to mark. I don't know. I haven't figured out yet. I started to uh, mark waypoints. Then I ran into a couple of spots that I could just tell had fish on them. And I thought, you know what, let's just fish them. And I ended up, I caught all my keepers in two spots. I, I caught fish in a lot of spots, but, but short. I caught all my keepers in two spots. So now I gotta go try to find some spots on that side tomorrow. Um, so I'll be back in the morning, bright and early. Okay, thanks for watching. Oh, I wanna give a shout out to uh, Paul here on the lake he he was nice enough he let me uh, fish around his boathouse I, I don't think fishermen ever fish it because you got to go through some this log uh, barrier uh, but he came out to talk to me very nice man 
and uh, he let me fish around his boathouse. So shout out to Paul. He said he was going to subscribe too. So okay, I'll see you tomorrow.